All right, welcome back. Our GMC Sierra tweet of the night is from Jen Bellano, Pittsburgh Penguins PR with his 82nd point of the season. Sidney Crosby has clinched an 18th point per game season in his 18-year career. Only Wayne Gretzky has averaged a point per game in more seasons than Crosby. Uh, Chris, it's pretty amazing stuff. It's the model of consistency. He does it uh, and a year in and year out. And, and unfortunately, he had a couple of lost years, you know, cumulatively with that concussion situation he was dealing with. What an amazing athlete he has been from start to finish. Yeah, the concussion years early in his career, really in the prime of his career, that cut short what was going to be his best statistical season, I think, are a real shame. But he's carved out such an unbelievable career after that and put all that in the rearview mirror. I know people hate it when I use this guy's comparison, but the sustained excellence well into his mid-30s now and in his sport, obviously a time when it's such a physical sport to be, it's even tougher to be great into your mid-30s and you're not protected by the officials, but it's like Tom Brady in football. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the Brady of hockey yep. as far as just sustained excellence. And as I just said, the refs don't protect him. The physical demands on him are much greater game in and game out what he's got to do. He's incredible. Really quick here before we get to the phones, Bob, that makes their playoff uh, futility in the last several years and the fact that they might not even make it this year even more frustrating. Mm -hmm. But the futility especially because, as you well know, once you get past the first round, you get more of a national audience. It's all these, it's the local market that gets to produce most of the games, right? Yep. You don't see him in many national games in the playoffs, deep into the playoffs, because the Penguins can't make a sustained run. I actually think that that almost, that Crosby is still almost undersold for his greatness in some yeah. places. I was hoping several years ago we'd see a Crosby uh, McDavid matchup somehow, some way. And, you know, Edmonton has struggled to get there, although they got to the conference finals last year. Hopefully one day we will, although I hope it's not so late in Sydney's career because McDavid's still flying out there. Let's get to the lines because we have a lot of people on him. Uh, will in McKee's Rocks, you're first. Go ahead, Will. Hey, guys. How are you tonight? We're good. Good. Oh, good. Listen, I have a comment and a question real quick. The comment is I think I think Pitbull will play very well tomorrow and get by. And my question is, Bob, do you think that they should start, the Penguins should start the Smith on Saturday? Well, well, since they started Jari, and I was a little surprised by that. I would have gone with the Smith. I'm going to start Jari again. I think they've made it their mission to get him back. It's kind of a risky proposition, too, because this is not the sort of uh, – game action late in the season where you're battling for points that you're trying to get your goaltender right. But if they know also that if they're going to go long, Chris, they're going to need him to be the man. And tonight he gave evidence that maybe he's regaining some of it. Yeah, I mean, I think he needs to continue to be out there. If, if whatever injury might still be nagging at him isn't severe enough to keep him on the bench or allow his, you know, prohibits him from playing, then he's got to be the guy that they try to ride down the stretch here because he is, as you said, going to be their only chance to make a deep postseason run. You play Casey DeSmith maybe one or two other games here, but you really try to go with Jari and get him as sharp as he can be. Fatigue be damned, really. Uh, they can't afford to leave any, any kind of cards in the deck at this point. As to uh, Will's first statement there, Iowa State is basically a clone of Mississippi State. They're defense-minded. They don't score the ball very well, maybe a little bit better than Mississippi State, Pitt's got to be much better. And I don't think Federico Federico has a chance of playing. That's my opinion. I, I've not heard anything encouraging. Pitt needs to be way better on the glass because they are not going to get away with what happened against Mississippi no. State and get a win again. Mississippi State missed too many shots. They could have made 20 rebounding advantage, and yet they lose that game. Yeah, Pitt made a shot when they had to, but it's going to be uh, – they better play better. Absolutely. Are they beatable, Iowa State? Absolutely also. And if Pitt does win, you know, they have a bracket that's much more doable than even West Virginia would have had facing Alabama because that would have been the next step had they won today, and even Penn State. So, who knows? Maybe they'll meet again, Pitt and Penn State, at some point. I – I see. I feel like we shouldn't be getting ahead of ourselves and saying, look, they've got a really doable bracket. Xavier's a pretty weak third seed. They could win the Sean Miller sort of semi revenge game uh, or anything like that, Bob. They got to get past Iowa State and they're going to be an, they're an underdog by several points, like five or six points. They're the lower seeded team. Focus on the task in front of you at hand. Like I, I just I think they're going to need to shoot the lights out again. Chances are to win this game and they very well could because that's their calling card. But you know, they are a, a kind of one-dimensional team. If they're not filling it up from outside, it's going to be a long night. There's something about it, though. I want the big uh, 
12 to somehow suffer here. I want to see them lose all their games so people who said this conference is so great will look at a 1-6 and six record of their first seven games or something like that. We'll see. Let's go to Paul in Avalon. Paul, you're up. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering if the Penguins don't make the playoffs or get knocked out in the first round, if they would fire Sullivan or Hextall. I think Hextall, yes. Sullivan, no. Chris? Uh, I think Hextall is going to be as good as gone unless they make a deep playoff run. Like, I think they would really need to do something spectacular to even consider uh, having him back next year. Sullivan, no. I don't think there's the sense that Sullivan has lost the players, which is always what gets a guy fired in this town. I do think Mike Sullivan deserves some criticism, though. I think he's much Mm -hmm. too loyal to veterans that can't pull their weight. And at some point, you have to be able to say to your head coach, no matter how much success he's had, no matter how quick he was to 400 wins, and he was quicker than almost everyone in the history of the sport, you've got to do some things differently. Yeah, and you know, back in the day, he did that differently with Flurry when Murray came along. He decided to stick with him, and fine, and it worked. But yeah, in this Jeff Carter situation, I just, at some point, you just have to say, that's enough. I've seen enough. You're still going to get paid. <laughs> Sit for a while. Let's go to Dave in Greensburg. Dave, what's going on? Do you think uh, Jalen Carter would uh, fall to Steelers since uh, he didn't have a good combine? And I guess maybe. he was in some trouble or whatever. Yeah, maybe. I mean, serious trouble, actually. Um, you know, the only thing about that is – I don't is think he's on their board, Bob. I don't, don't think he's on their board. How can you know he not why? be? Here's, well, here's why. Here's why I think that you could conceivably have him functionally – let me put it this way – functionally off your board. Yes, he's on everyone's board. He couldn't even finish his pro day workouts. For anybody that that doesn't know the distinction, those pro day workouts are geared to make a player who might already be great look as great as possible. Like that is when the environment is under your control. You're throwing to your guys on your terms. It's not the combine. It's not the NFL dictating it. Jalen Carter was so out of shape, he couldn't even finish the lineman drills. He looked horrible. And I think that would take him off of Mike Tomlin's board and possibly Andy Weidel's. Mike Tomlin's personal board, though, we know, Bob, how much he loves these pro days. He lives for this stuff, right? He loves going to the big powerhouse schools. He loves talking to people. He loves ball. That's a job interview for Jalen Carter. You show up to it. If I showed up to a job interview with you 15 years ago in a, well, okay, I can't say in a T-shirt and a blazer because that's my new uniform here. That's what I wear. But in a rumpled shirt with taco sauce stains on it and my tie was undone, I said, hey, I love to work here. He'd say, get out of here. What are you doing? That's what Jalen Carter did. If he's going to act like that at his job interview, how could you possibly trust him with being your team's first-round pick right now? Still a big talent. I wonder how far he'll fall then if that's the case. And if he's available even at 32, would you consider it? It's interesting to see. Let's go to Mac in Butler County. Hey, Mac. Hey, guys. Good evening. Hey, just a question here on this Hextall Sullivan thing. If I understand this, the Penguins have lost seven games when leading by two goals in the third period. I'm not, I'm not favoring Hextall, but I'm just saying that's Sullivan. There's nobody else to blame by that. They haven't made the adjustments to hold those games. If they win half of them, win three, they get six more points, Yeah, they're in the playoffs. Easy. Well, I think a lot of it also, you can blame the coach, but if you watch some of these games, I've watched enough of them to know that their defensive coverage in front of their goaltending at times is terrible, and then the goaltending is terrible. You know, you could still be in a position of play, outplaying teams, but just little breakdowns here. You know, I I always find that a difficult assessment to make, Chris, the coach versus the execution of the players who know better. This is the oldest team in the NHL. Hmm. You know, I don't think he's telling them not to do what they've been doing in these third periods. Like, I think that's a compelling argument to make and say maybe Hextall's not been as bad, but here's the flip side. You could say Mike Sullivan's been coaching his tail off in the first two periods of these games to get his team a lead with maybe an undermanned, under-talented roster that was poorly constructed and then the house of cards tends to fall apart when the pressure rises. Like, I, I think ultimately the burden here is on Hextall. He had to know what this team's blind spots and weak spots were in the offseason. There were moves that could have been made or moves that could have been not made that would have put them in better position, and he has pressed so far all the wrong buttons and levers. It's like if the board in front of him was a whole thing of red buttons that said, do not press this, he just kept <laughs> punching them like it was a whack-a-mole game at a, at a local county fair. <laughs> It's an interesting way to look at it, and I would agree. Absolutely. we got to take a break. We have more calls on the way. Frank and Moon, you'll be up first when we come back. But just a little shout-out. Uh, Lending Hearts is a great organization that helps cancer families, people who have these issues. And tonight, I've emceed this every year, Cam Hayward was our man of the year for obvious reasons. He's a Hall of Fame person. We know that. Hopefully a Hall of Fame player. I think he's tracking there. But he and I would both agree that Leo Zambori was the big star of this one. He was diagnosed with cancer at age 5. 
Uh, now he's 12, he's cancer free, and what a great young man. And when you see stories like that, it makes you realize how important it is to have organizations like Lending Hearts on your side. We'll take a break and come back with more right after this.